perfect auto notification system needs a perfect video. This one. I am Mata and this is Not Enough Tech and welcome! Today we're gonna to talk about uh, Tasker and notifications and there is no better way of creating notifications on Tasker than Auto Notification Plugin. With one problem. Have you actually seen how many options you have to configure in order to create a single notification? Now imagine you have to create five of them. You're gonna spend just 10 to 20 minutes just entering the var values and variables inside the notification itself. This is just obscene. However, I've got you covered there because I just created a perfect notification system for auto notification. Now, it builds on my near perfect um, auto notification system, which you can read a little bit more about in a corner. Uh, and it creates, well, it's perfect because you no longer have to submit an entire string and you can cherry pick the information you want to send to your tasker. But let me show you an example so you would know how it works and then I'll explain that in a detailed tutorial. So let's take a look at the Node-RED. As you can see, I've got Node-RED set up in here. And this is how you create the notifications with a single task a profile. As you can see, you can switch between the notifications very quickly and select different features, etc. And the same can be done with uh, Event Ghost. So if you go to Event Ghost, uh, you can send a sample message. Excellent, so that's how it works and now how to make it happen. To understand perfect auto notifications, we have to head back in time to my near perfect auto notification setup. Uh, if you have a look at the website, you will see that I've created a notification based on a string and this string would be sent over to Tasker to create a notification below based on the variables submitted in the auto notification action. Now near perfect meant that uh, you would have to submit entire string in correct order every single time you wanted to create a notification. Something I was able to improve upon by using JSON. Now here on the left hand side I have an example JSON file. And this example JSON file looks like this. You can see each field that can be pre-filled with some uh, sample text, which are green on the screen. Now, the advantage of this approach is that I don't have to submit entire JSON file for each notification. I can only, um, I can cherry pick just particular options I'm interested in and submit those and everything's gonna be working just as fine. So to showcase that a little bit better, and I promised I'm gonna uh, take a look at Node-RED, Event Ghost, and Android notifications. So let's take a look at uh, Node-RED. You can see I've got a couple of setups in here, and this is the function node that basically uh, sends, go up, composes, and then sends the HTTP post requests using um, the auto remote. Now, there's a couple of components that you have to modify. Let's start with key. And key, this is the auto remote key value. I'm using credential system, which I've wrote about a couple of weeks ago, uh, but you can hard code the uh, auto remote key yourself if you don't want to use that. Then second thing is, uh, is to modify the command. In this case, I've got notification 2.0. And that's going to be the command the tasker is going to respond to. So when the tasker will see the command starting with notification 2.0, uh, then it's going to think, okay, I have to create a notification using a body. And this is the body, it's just that JSON um, object. Now, you don't, as I said, you don't have to submit entire JSON object. As you can see in here, the body of the JSON object is much smaller in here and with only a couple of fields I've used. Then later on, the message is basically stripped from empty spaces, encoded as a URL, put together and sent via HTTP request in here. So that's how it works in Node-RED. Uh, the same 
in the same way you can send a, a notification using Event Ghost. In Event Ghost, uh, there is a couple of differences on how to send that post request because we're going to use the Python script. So this is a Python script example and I've used a full body in here. So as previously, we have to get the key for auto remote messages and I've used the uh, credentials uh, system. So we'll just check the credentials on uh, notenoughtech.com and you'll know how to do it this way. Or you can just hard code the key yourself, then command in this case, the same as previously, notification 2.0 and then message, which is that um, JSON. This all being uh, linked together and then sent as a request post uh, to the, the target Android device. One more thing I should mention is whenever sending um, the JSON file using Python, you have to remember that the, in Py Python requires you to spell your boolean with uppercase first letter. So while in JavaScript you use a lowercase a T for true and F for false, in uh, Python you use uppercase uh, T for true and uppercase F for false. Let's take a look at the tasker. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can either create notifications using auto remote or you can create notifications locally from the same device using the same mechanism. So in both circumstances, I'm going to look for the specific filter. Uh, in, when the notification is sent from outside uh, using auto remote, I'm using for auto remote event and then I'm using filter, in this case, not notifications 2.0. I've picked something unusual so it wouldn't be featured in my JSON files and it wouldn't be uh, picked false positively. And if I'm creating one locally, I'm using slightly different uh, command and that's the auto app command filter. And uh, in this case, I'm using not AA 2.0. They both link to the same task. This task is responsible for taking JSON stored either with auto remote command or auto apps command, depending which one is set, and storing it in a test variable. I've used the global variable so you can see how it looks like for troubleshooting. Then there is an auto tools read action which basically translates all the needed information from the JSON into variables. As you can see in here in the configuration, the info format is JSON and then the source is a test variable. Then I'm looking for a row of different fields which is going to be translated into these variables. These fields are verbatim spellings because I've unchecked the simple mode in here. Uh, if you uncheck this, you have to spell the JSON entries correctly. So if you're going to go to fields, uh, then obviously you can configure that yourself in here. Uh, another good thing is that uh, you can pick which fields you want to uh, use. If you have a need for very specific auto notifications, then you can populate and add more fields to this field and uh, basically generate more variables for later use. Lastly, the task is to create a notification itself and you can create an array of notifications. This is just an example showing you auto notification, but you can use grid, pictures, etc. Now all you have to do is just go through specific fields in your notification and fill them with corresponding variables. Now fill as many as you like because it won't matter later on if you don't populate them because they're going to be just empty and not going to show in final notification. So if you, for example, your notification has uh, just one button, uh, you, you can configure button number two and they're not going to uh, be disturbing in any way when creating new notifications or when you want to just populate the title and don't use the title expanded, just leave the title expanded empty so that won't be populated and the notification will display as normal. Now, a quick note about icons. You can pass the icons in two ways. Uh, always stick the um, notification var icon, uh, sorry, notification variable. Uh, 
Under this variable, you can either define the local path or URL from the network. Lastly, I mentioned I'll show you how to send a notification from one Android device to another. And that's a simple uh, auto remote message task. You have to remember to include the message command in front. So my message will start with not 2.0 and then equal sign colon equal sign to separate the command, the parameter from the AR command, which is going to contain the JSON file itself. And that will work just fine. If you want to create this locally, uh, you can send the uh, auto apps command configured in the very same way. It's just uh, the command itself have to be exactly the same configured as the command for, for the event. So in this case, I used uh, notification 2.0 AA. And now don't tell me that this isn't a perfect notification uh, system for auto notification. Now guys, thanks so much for watching. If you don't mind, subscribe for my channel because apparently only 10% of you are actually subscribed to my channel from all the viewers of my videos. So that's something interesting. Anyway, with that interesting information, I'm gonna leave you until the next video. So uh, take care and see you then. Bye. Hi. This is Matt. I'm and I'm not enough to <laughs> No I'm not. <laughs>